Okay, so magandang araw sa ating lahat. Um, another uh, module for structural engineering and construction. Um, here, I uh, will be discussing or solving this sample problem um, involving stresses in beams. Okay, so let's answer this together. A situation. A built-up steel beam composed of an S-shape and a channel bolted together as shown is subjected by a moving concentrated load P. Okay, so the beam carries a 100 mm thick concrete slab having an effective width of 1.5 meters. The unit weight of the concrete is 24 kilonewtons per cubic meters and the length of the simple beam is 8 meters. So, ito yung cross-section na binigay. Okay, we have the properties of the section. So, dalawa to dalawang um, steel um, I mean steel shape no we have the S shape uh, yung S shape this is the uh, actually the I beam ito ito yung S shape nakapangalan na siyang S okay so ito yung effective depth um, inertia along about the x axis or the strong axis and we have this weight um the area cross sectional area of this s shape and the beam flange yon so another section this is the channel section ito nakahiga lang siya no so the properties of the channel section again we have the depth we have the thickness of the web we have the x sub o so i will discuss this later mamaya okay and the cross section and the inertia about the um, weak axis I sub Y and we have the weight of 45 kilograms per cubic meters so let me draw this first or define these properties dito sa ating cross section para ma um, imagine natin okay so determine the moment of inertia in mm raised to 4 of the belt up section with respect to centroidal x axis so, pag sinabing x-axis, that is the stronger axis. Okay, so define muna natin. Um, for the S-shape, yung D natin is ito. Dapat from outer to outer. No? That is the total depth of the S-shape. Ito naman, this is the beam flange. Ito. Since S-shape siya, so equal lang siya dito sa itaas. Okay? 2 to 8 millimeters. Now, um, for the channel section, this one, um, the centroidal axis will not be acting in the um, channel alone or wala siya sa loob. Um, somewhere dito siya. Okay? But, as you can see in this uh, drawing or in this figure, yung I and, I mean, yung X axis is nasa pataas na siya or naka vertical dito sa drawing. No? Ito. And yung Y axis nakahiga. Bakit? Because pag sinabing x-axis sa uh, um, properties natin, that is the stronger axis. So, mas mahirap um, i-bend yung channel nato pag in-rotate natin about the x-axis. Ibig sabihin ng x-axis dito sa section are the strong axis. Okay? And this is the y-axis. That means that this for channel section, yung iy natin, it will be rotating about this axis. Okay, because naka-orient din ito na mag-resist to bending about this axis na. Okay, I hope hindi kayo malito dito. Now, yung XO, um, that is defined from this portion, from the outer portion of the channel to this point, to the centroid. And by the way, this one, ito yung depth ng ating channel. That is the depth. Okay? And... This is the thickness of the web. 13. Thickness of the web. Yung web parang body ng ating um, section kasi. This one is the X sub O. 17. Ang uh, X sub O, uh, basically, uh, the definition is the distance from the outer web, doon sa kabila, to the centroid. Okay? And, I think we completed na uh, the important things here. Okay? Now, what's next? So, since we need to determine the moment of inertia in times 10 raised, uh, times 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4, 
then we need to do the ano, um, inertia formula we can use the a transfer formula or we can use our calculator para mas madali okay so using the canon f789sga okay so ang gagawin lang natin is gagawa tayo ng reference point it can be dito sa itaas or dito sa ibaba um actually kahit sa ano but pinaka the best of course dito tayo sa gitna mag reference point no and let me call this one as point o okay so then take note that this section has two um type of section we have this s shape and we have this channel so let me call this one as a sub 1 yung area ng ating um s shape and this one ito yung a sub 2 yung area ng ating channel okay i hope you got this one then sa calculator natin mode, mode stat linear uh, i think that is in mode 3 2 and dapat naka frequency on okay so sa calculator natin ang lalabas diyan x y and frequency i-on natin yung frequency okay sa x ang ilagay natin is inertia of that uh, of that section divided by its cross sectional area okay nandito man yung mga inertias binigay naman dito um so y is the, the dis is the distance from the reference point to the centroid of that section. And for the frequency, ang ilalagay natin is the area. Okay, so, unahin natin yung uh, maybe the, the S shape. No? I said that that should be inertia over the area. For the S shape, this one, inertia is 995 times 10 raised to 6. I-divide natin ng cross-sectional area, that one. Okay, so 995 times 10 raised to 6 divided by 18,900. Yung y natin dyan, um, that should be, take note that y is from the reference point to the centroid of this cross section. So um, the depth here is 610. That's why the centroid from the, from the reference point is half of the 610. Okay, now the area of course that is 18,900. Another section here is this one, the channel section. Okay, again, uh, we will input inertia over the area. And you may ask me, sir, that is IY, but um, for the S section, that is IX. The same lang ba? Um, ito ba yung ilalagay natin dito? Yes, um, because hindi necessary na dapat IX to, then IX din ang ilalagay natin sa channel. Um, dapat i-analyze natin saan yung bending. Take note that our channel here is nakahiga. So, if mag a tayo ng moment sa beam, then it will rotate about the um, y-axis or the weak axis of this channel. Okay? I hope you understand this one. So, therefore, ilalagay natin dito is um, the inertia y, that one, divided by the area. Ito. Okay? Now, the distance from the reference point to the centroid of that um, channel is, okay, so take note, ang distance na gagamitin natin dito, okay, let me draw this one, should be from the reference point dito up to the, ayan, up to the centroid. So, how can we calculate this distance? Okay, I hope you imagine this one. So, from here, we can use these uh, dimensions. I-add lang natin, then I-minus. From here, up to that point, that is 610. Ito. Okay? Then, uh, from here, up to that point, that is 13. So, plus 13, then I-minus natin yung 17. Kaya, babalik tayo sa centroid. Okay? Now, the area. Of course, the area is, ah, ito, 5690. Okay, so ano yung gagawin natin sa calculator natin? So, from here, ito yung syntax. Hanapin natin sa calculator yung barred y. Itong barred y na to, ito yung um, distance from the reference point to the centroid of the built-up section. Remember, pag binilt up natin, magkakaroon yan ng composite action. Parang naging isa sila, nakumbine sila. 
Okay? Well, it depends naman sa um, connection natin if ma if strong ba yung connection, no? Pag hindi strong yung connection, of course, hindi sila bubu bubuo ng um, composite action. Well, in this case, alam naman natin, pag dinedesign natin, dapat composite talaga siya. Okay? So, inner, uh, I mean, the barred Y, that is the distance from the reference point to the centroid of the belt up section. So, yan, makukuha natin yan. Now, for the inertia, which is yung hinahanap sa number one, um, Okay, ito yung barred y, no? Inertia is ito. Ito yung syntax natin sa calculator. Summation of x plus n sigma y squared. Well, if you remember the formula ix plus area d squared. Ito lang yun. Okay, similar lang ito. Okay, so maybe I can show you this in the calculator. So, input muna natin ito. Itong lahat, no? Let me clear the data lang, no? So, mode, again, I said stat. Uh, stat here is in bottom 3, then linear. So, number 2. Then, take note, wala pa tayong frequency. I-add natin yung frequency. So, shift, um, mode, then hanapin yung frequency dito for then frequency on. Okay, you can just replay ano yung ginawa ko. Now, input natin to, um, 995 um, times 10, times 10 raised to 6. Okay, ito yung nasa calculator natin, no? times 10 raised to 6 yan. And divided by 18,900. Okay, so, ilagay ko lang to, 2.14 uh, times 10 raised to 6. And divided by 5690. Okay. Uh, here, that is one half of um, 610, or we can just say 0. 0.5 times uh, 610. Uh, this one, okay, input lang 610 plus uh, 13 minus 17. Okay, so on the last column, for the areas 18900 then 5690 okay so after that hahanapin natin to press ca lang okay so we can find this one in the apps button so apps then hmm, san ba yon um variants 5 no bar y yung bar y natin is at button 5 Okay, so press equals, then ito yung sagot. Okay, so magagamit natin tumamaya kasi yung barred y, kaya kinuha natin. Now, for the inertia, which is yung hinahanap for number one, again, just follow this um, syntax. So, apps, then uh, yung summation of x, I think nasa sum yan for a so 2. A plus, and apps pa rin, nasa apps lahat yan, no? Um, 5, hanapin nyo natin yung n sa button 5 and 1. Okay, you can just replay this one. Then, yung sigma y squared, apps, um, saan ba yun? I think nasa 4. Oh, wala, wala. Um, apps, uh, variance, s variance. So, sigma y squared, ito siya. Ganito nakalagay sa calculator na to. Iba siya sa uh, 570 or 991ES plus, no? Y sigma N yung nakalagay dito. Okay? So, the same lang yan. Yung sigma Y squared or Y sigma N. 6. Then, square natin siya. Yun. So, here we can calculate na the inertia. Which is, ito yun. Okay? Divide natin by 10 raised to 6. Uh, 10 raised to... 6. Then, ito yun. 1393.37, which is a letter A sa choices. Okay? I hope you get this one. Or, i-rewind nyo lang talaga. Mag-gets nyo lang to. Okay? So, uh, we have answer for number 1. Then, for number 2, if P is 180 kilonewtons, ang calculate the maximum bending stress 
in the beam. Okay, so take note that the P is the moving load. So tayo yung magde-decide kung saan natin ilalagay yan para magkakaroon tayo ng maximum stress. Okay, kailan tayo magkakaroon ng maximum bending stress? That is when um, the moment is maximum also. So, if this is the simple, simple beam which has a simple length of 8 meters, no? so the P is a moving load. But take note that the beam alone, ito, may weight yan. Uniformly distributive load. Ito, this one. Take note that the S-shape or yung I natin, I-beam, is um, having a weight of 149 kilograms per meter. And also, um, the channel section may weight din yan, 45 kilograms per meters. Okay? So, we should account this one sa beam weight natin or sa load natin. Okay? So, uh, let's call that W. And the... Our uh, load P, concentrated load P is moving load. So I will just assume this one at a distance X from this endpoint. Okay, so define muna natin yung mga loads natin. Okay, take note. Um, this, this beam is carrying a slab having a thickness of... Um, saan ba yun? May nilagay ba na thickness? Ito. The, the beam carries 100 mm thick concrete slab. Okay. And the effective width, ito, yung kinikere niya is 100, uh, 1,500 millimeters or 1.5 meters. Okay? So, maa-add din natin ito sa weight ng ating W or uniformly distributive load. Now, um, the weight here, A, eh, unahin na ito, 149 kilograms per meter plus the weight of the channel. I-multiply natin by 9.81 para maging newtons. I-divide natin by 1,000 para maging kilonewtons. Okay? So, maging kilonewtons meter to. Then, plus the uniformly distributive load na makakost ng ating slab dito si Taz. So, that is unit weight of the concrete, 24 kilonewtons per cubic meters, uh, multiplied by this cross-sectional area. Uh, 1.5, ginawa ko siyang meters. Uh, multiplied by 0 0.1 meters. So here, we have the weight or the uniformly distributive load. Now, and the question here is saan natin ilalagay or ano yung position ng P to induce a maximum moment. Okay. Ano sa palagay nyo? Dapat, yung P natin, ilalagay natin siya sa ating midspan. Of course, no? If ilalagay natin yan sa midspan, then it will create a maximum moment because magbe-bend yung ating beam in uh, this uh, position. No? Ito yung elastic curve. So, of course, um, logical naman. Pag nasa gitna talaga yan, mas magbe-bend yung ating beam. Okay? Okay, proceeding. So, we need to calculate first the moment here at the midspan. The moment here should be the maximum moment. Okay? So, take note for uniformly distributive load, the maximum um, bending moment is given by this formula. WL squared over 8. Okay? Now, for P naman, if P is at the center of the beam, we have this formula. PL cube over 4. I mean, PL over 4 lang. Okay? Okay, so direct substitution lang. The W is 5.5, L is 8, uh, divided by 8. P is 180, L is 8 pa rin, divided by 4. So we have uh, the maximum moment as 404 kilonewtons meter. Now we can calculate directly our uh, maximum bending stress by using the formula MY over I. Okay. So, ano yung y natin? The moment is 404. This one. Okay? Um, the y, hindi pa natin alam. Uh, yung i natin is yung nakuha natin kanina. Saan ba yun? Ah, dara, dara. So, ito yung i natin. Okay? So, ano yung y natin? Para magkaroon tayo ng maximum bending stress. 
Okay, so as you remember, uh, why is the distance, any distance from the centroid to the um, portion of the beam? So in order for that, our maximum, uh, our bending stress is maximum, dapat maximum din then yung y natin. Or actually, um, naka-generalize siya as C in the formula. Pag maximum bending stress, uh, this is mc over i. Okay, so since hindi naka-specify if that is compression or tension, then we can use the absolute value of the bending stress, maximum. Okay, so take note that this one is 374.65. E-check down na natin ito from here up to this point, kung ano yung distance na yan. Baka hindi scale yung drawing natin. No? Then pipiliin natin sa kanilang dalawa yung um, ano yung maximum. Ano? Alam ha? So, ang hinahanap ito, maximum bending stress in the beam lang. So, uh, we may not include this slab dito sa taas. Okay? So, ang pagpipilian natin is this distance or up to this distance lang. Well, obviously, parang mas malaki talaga ito. Because mag-shift yung centroid natin pa itaas. Okay, so diretso na pala tayo. Ito yung gagamitin nating part, uh, I mean y dito. Maximum distance from the centroid. Okay, I hope you get this one. So direct substitution. Uh, moment is 404. Um, y is 374.65 divided by the inertia, that one. So here, we have the answer 108.62 megapascals. Okay, ayos. Right? So, uh, number three. Situational to. So, if the bolts are spaced at 100 millimeters, uh, find the maximum horizontal shear stress that can be resisted on the contact surface uh, between the channel and the wide flange. Okay. So, this is the channel. Of course, this is the wide flange. Yung contact surface na sinasabi dyan is ito. Of course, may contact sila dito. Okay, so at that point, um, actually, pag walang bolt, ito yung bolts natin, yan. Actually, pag walang bolt dito, magsaslide lang siya, okay? Um, hindi siya magkakaroon ng composite action. But because of this, of this bolt, kaya naging solid yung ating um, beam or ating built-up section. So, ano da yung maximum shear stress at this portion? If the spacing of the bolts is 100 mm. So we can use the formula here. Or we can use the um, principle talaga or actual solu manual solution. Okay, so spacing now is 100 millimeters. Okay, so ito yun. Ito yung sinasabi niyang spacing. Pag ito yung um, ating um, view, makikita natin yung bolts dito nakalagay dyan. Okay, I hope you can um, imagine this one. So, ano daw yung maximum shear stress dyan pag 100 mm yung bolt? So, kadalasan yung nasosolve natin mga problems is spacing yung hinahanap. And we have the formula of that, no? But here, yung shear stress dito yung hahanapin. So, ganito siya um, dinerive yung formula na yun. Yun. Okay, tinanggal ko lang yung channel natin. Now, we will use a tributary width dito sa bolt natin. That is our tributary width. Um, that is also spacing S. Okay? S din yan. Now, um, the, uh, we can have the force here because of the shear stress at this um, portion. Okay? Ito yung force due to the shear stress at that portion. And we can equate this one to the um, force uh, resisting resistant force of the bolt natin. Take note that the bolt has a shearing resistance and that is called R. No? Now, equating these forces for equilibrium, take note that the force here is due to the shear stress of the on this portion sa beam natin. So, shear stress, uh, that is denoted as F sub B, then the area here is, ano yung area natin dito? The tributary width. Uh, that is the spacing times ano to? Diba this is the beam flange? Ito. Beam flange ng ating or flange ng ating channel. Okay? 
uh, which is ano uh, okay dito ito pala that is the beam flange okay so that's why um this force is stress times the area this area dito the shear area okay so ano yung r naman natin the same pa rin, stress times area now gagamitin natin dito is the allowable shear stress allowable shear stress of the bolt are multiplied by the area of the bolt and multiplied by the number of bolts in that line no? so we have the allowable shearing stress here which is 90 mpa and the area of the bolt of course we have the diameter then we can just calculate the area and the number of bolts per line here is dalawa okay now we can calculate the shear stress here um by using this one lang no okay substitute um the spacing is 100 millimeters um uh, beam flange or the contact surface actually this one is defined as the contact thickness or contact surface sa ating um, flange and the um, um channel section okay so allowable is 90 Area of the bolt is pi over 4 times the diameter of bolt, which is 25, and multiplied by the number of bolts per line. Okay? So, here we can calculate the shear stress as 3.87 mega pascal. Okay? So, what if hindi nyo alam to? Uh, medyo malito kayo, no? Pag, um, sa pag-imagine ng drawing natin. So, if alam nyo yung formula, di ba may spacing formula tayo dito? Okay. Ano yun? So, yung spacing formula for the bolt, no? So, if alam nyo to, pwede rin. Uh, I-rearrange lang natin ito, no? So, take note that yung shear stress na hinahanap is given by this formula. The shear stress, horizontal shear stress. Now, um, this term, VQ over I, ito pala, ito. Yang VQ over I is present dito. Which is ito. Okay, kita nyo? Present yung VQ over I natin dyan. So, we can just rearrange this one. Okay, I just rearrange this one. VQ over I. And it can be R over S dito. Okay, just follow this one. Parang i-cross multiply lang natin tong term dito sa taas. Then ito rin. Then, i-substitute natin yung VQ over I, that is R over S dito. So, that's why uh, this formula magiging R over ST. Gets? Yung VQ over I na to, ito, is R over S. So, R over S, then i-multiply natin by the thickness. Okay? So, the thickness here, or the T, is the contact thickness uh, between two bodies. So, uh, the contact thickness, of course, ito yung beam flange natin. Okay, so, substitute natin. Again, yung R is defined as the resisting force, the resisting shearing force sa ating bolt. So, allowable shear stress times the area of the bolt times the number of bolt per line and divided by the spacing 100 millimeters times the contact thickness, which is here, the beam flange 228. Okay. So, the same lang yan yung um, sagot dito. 3.87 and that is letter B. Okay, so that's, is, uh, that's it for this um, example.